dimensions tonight and after our lovely panel we'll definitely give you guys some more time to to dive into the artwork um, we have two of our amazing artists um, that we're going to be doing a panel with tonight. We have another one of our amazing artists that showed up tonight, um, and it's right over there. Um, but our panel is going con to consist of these two guys, but I wanted to let you guys know a little bit about who we are here at Hope Studios. Um, this space that you're standing at is called Hope Studios. We just finished building it less than a year ago um, and just finished all of our installation for lights and all that good stuff um, last month. And we are so happy to open up our space for art like this, for projects like this, um, and be able to connect with people um, that maybe consider themselves a little left of center, like we do, <laughs> maybe consider themselves um, misfits, um, like we do. Um, and so the space, our mission is simple. We want to create art and we want to create spaces and content that gets us closer to ourselves, closer to art, history, closer to our community, music, et cetera, et cetera, and ultimately closer to God. Um, so that's just a little bit about us. We were able to partner with um, De La Snoop's company, um, Denise Coke over here, um, to put on this lovely AR art exhibit, and we're so proud of the work that's being transformed in this space today, and excited to hear just a little bit more and learn a little bit more about AR art. One of the things that really stood out as we began to put this event together is that a lot of people understand what art is, but they don't understand how we can take it off the paper and make it begin to come to life. And so that's what these artists have done, um, and we want to make sure we pick their brains as much as possible. We should also um, open it up um, to a couple of questions at the end, just in case people have some questions that they want to ask. So I'm going to introduce you guys to our host tonight. Um, she goes by the name of Angela Elise Johnson. She's a dear friend, but she's also with one of our sponsored um, one of our companies that sponsored the event, 9B, who is a concept art company. And so they've been blessing us tonight, um, being able to sponsor this event, and she's going to come and lead our panel tonight. So just put a, give a round of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out in all this cold weather. Y'all, when I moved to LA, I was like, they're not supposed to have it like this. What is this? Like, in Chicago, it's freezing, so I guess it's a little bit different, but I wasn't expecting y'all to get snow like this. Are y'all baffled by this, too? No okay, just me? All right. Well, thank you all again for coming out tonight. We're so excited for this amazing event, and tonight we are highlighting two of our artists, Denise and Jackie. Give them a round of applause, please. So as we get started, I would love to hear from the two of you about how you got into the art space, how you, you know, started into the XR industry, and just like your journey, just to give everybody like a few minutes about you. All right, yes, so my name is Denise Pope. I am also one of the partners tonight. Um, Snoop Designs is my company. I started in 2011, and it's a creative agency doing everything from graphic design to branding to augmented reality solutions. I got my start into the art industry since I was a child. I loved drawing. I actually was drawing all over the books, and my parents will tell you that was very annoying, but <laughs> over time, I kind of curated um, my own talents and my own spaces, and I started to get more into graphic design and fashion design. Um, I went to high school for fashion design specifically, realized that I really loved doing fashion illustration, but I also knew there wasn't a lot of money in it, unfortunately. So I wanted to find a way to kind of bring art and technology together, so that's how I went into graphic design. Um, to make a long story short, did college, um, it was a blast. And I also started my business when I was in college, and after that, that's when I started to do the art shows. So I was doing solo art shows, I'm originally from New York, um, throughout the New York area. So my first one was in Brooklyn, then I was in Queens, and then I was in Harlem because I realized it was a little, it, was, it wasn't a little, it was actually very hard to get into gallery spaces, um, to find different collectives, and I just didn't know what I was doing, especially as a graphic designer. So, started having these art shows, and last year I actually did my first one out here in Los Angeles, which is where I met Kone, and um, it's just a blessing to see kind of like where we are right now, and my starting augmented reality started in 2016, where um, somebody has showed me a video of augmented reality, and I was like, hmm, I want to learn how to do that. <laughs> and uh, uh, taught myself how to do it. 
Um, I do animation, and that is how we are here today. So that's about me. My name is Jackie C. Smith. I'm an illustrator from Chicago. Um, yay! <laughs> um, so I've been here about 10 years, and I originally came for um, traditional animation. That's what I studied in college. Um, and then I worked in the animation studios for a while, and then I kind of realized that I just wanted to make my own art and work on my own passion projects. Um, so I left animation, and then I just started freelancing. So um, I have been doing that full time now for two years, but I've been doing it for eight years. and. In between there, I've had a lot of interesting side jobs that have kind of helped um, guide my art and uh, help make me the artist I am today. Um, one of those being working at an art studio where I met 50 other artists. So I got to learn about sculpting and painting and really honing my techniques while I was there. Um, and so yeah, I have uh, four pieces in the show today. Mine are not augmented, um, unfortunately, didn't have time, but I um, really love all the other artists' work today. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give that clap. Now, you both touched on this, and I want to talk a little bit more about it. You talked about, like, some of the challenges and some of the difficulties, and especially as women, as minorities. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because I think a lot of times, you know, we'll see, like, you know, the the things on, like, Sex in the City or whatever, like, of a struggling artist, right? And as an actor, I, I feel you, right? Like, I've been there, too. And so just talk a little bit about those difficulties and maybe some of the too, like how you kind of like navigate that stuff? Um, yes, there have been many difficulties <laughs> along the way. Um, one of which is like when you go to art school, they don't teach you anything about running your own business or how to interview for these artistic jobs. Like they don't tell you anything really, or at least in my experience, aside from how, like, how to put a portfolio together and that's about it. So having to come out of all that and learn all those things on my own, that was like definitely a learning curve that I always encourage like young younger artists like take a business class like learn about the behind the scenes aspects of being an artist that nobody tells you about. Yeah. Absolutely. I'll definitely say the same thing. Um, <laughs> business is something that I've had to learn on my own so seeing that I started my business straight out of high school I thought like okay I'm just gonna take money from doing flyers here and there and figure it out from there. Um, and then over time, I had to learn about taxes, I had to learn about invoicing, estimates, um, how to do purchase orders, things like that. <laughs> like kind of learning all these different things um, helped me as an artist and as a professional, and that makes it very easy for me to partner with companies and with um, different people who want to commission me. But it definitely is a learning curve, especially if you're just jumping into this industry. And um, the other, I would say, difficulty is definitely like figuring out who to network with and who's not kind of giving you fluff. So like actually finding connections with people who will actually put you in gallery spaces, who will tell you about fairs, um, people who will sponsor you for fairs, things like that. So all of it is a learning thing, a learning curve, and um, I'm constantly learning every day. Yeah. And so what would you say if I wanted to, or if one of the young artists out there wanted to like break into this industry, what would be some other like ways that you would suggest for them to kind of get into this? Like, cause I think, you know, some people do go the traditional route of school, like art center, all these different places, but then other people just kind of like do YouTube University, you know what I mean? So talk to me about the different ways and paths that there are, because it doesn't all look the same way, right? It doesn't. So there are multiple different ways. Um, I went to school for graphic design. You do not have to go to school at all for graphic design. Um, I will definitely say the one thing that I've gained from my bachelor's degree is when I took my introduction into kind of like business classes because it, that's what taught me about invoicing and things like that. Um, for augmented reality, if you're trying to get into that, learning about some type of way to do some form of animation, whether that's through Photoshop, After Effects is the program that I use. Um, there's also Premiere. Or if you can do like kind of like gifts through like Procreate, try to learn those type of applications because that's what engages your audience when you're doing augmented reality. And then um, I do my things in digital art. However, if you're working with like oil painting or you're doing traditional marker, um, you don't have to move your characters or pick them up and have them go across the screen. You can animate behind them, whether that's changing the color, increasing the scale. So. Also learning about like the 3D space, getting into Blender um, are some good ways to kind of like learn about augmented reality and, and do it on your own. 
Um, I'm, mine is more general, like just about becoming an artist. Um, I would say if you're just starting out, definitely rely on as much um, YouTube or like there are so many free um, informational sources nowadays. I like I think in a lot of ways like that would have been enough for me instead of college. But you know everybody is a little bit different, so I think that's a great way to start. And